Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I got an update video. Update as to where we're at, as far as the truck truck build anyway. We're super close to getting getting some paint on this thing, either what uh, next weekend or weekend after next. And I can't wait to share that process with you, my thoughts and how I'm gonna go about it and all that. It, there's a lot to it. It's, it's exciting to be at this point after working on this thing for so long. But before I sh share with you where I'm at in regards to the truck, I wanna take you on a trip that me, Elizabeth, my oldest brother Rick, we loaded up in the car. We drove three and a half hours on I-75 south into Tennessee, which is a beautiful place, <laughs> by the way. And if I ever move, it'll probably be to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. That place is nice. We went down there to look at something that we found on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, uh, something that Elizabeth's had her heart and her mind set on for quite some time. And uh, you know, I'll share the details about that with you you know, as you see the footage. And then once we get back here, I want to introduce you to a new family member that we got here at the Summers Homestead. And then we'll, then we'll go over the truck and my future plans. So thanks for watching. Going down the interstate, but just in case it decided to quit. 
or the burritos? The burritos? Yeah, she likes the bean burritos. Those are good too. He said, I know you look at that table every time you come to my house. He said, hey, I'm getting ready to move. I don't really have room for it. You've got first dibs. It was your grandfather's. I said, absolutely, I'll take it. I regretted selling it, but now I got, I don't wish it was out here. I actually remembered it being a little more narrow than this. I was hoping it was about, but when I got it back, I was like, yeah, it's a little wider than I remembered. Well, the good thing about that table is it could sit out here for about 30 years and it'll still be about the same exactly. as it was when you set it out here. But I remember being, well, my earliest memories of putting stuff in that vise. My grandpa would let me put stuff in the vise and squeeze it with a hammer, <laughs> squeeze stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I had a twin yeah, brother. that's old, old Parker. I had a twin brother, so I'd probably try to stick his fingers in it and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I try to put all in my own buildings. Indian stuff? Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. That's probably about a $150 sign because it predates the Surgeon General. Yeah, it's no warning on it, yeah. And that's new old stock. I hate to hang it, but I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna leave, leave it in a drawer either. Leave it in a drawer and die with yeah, it in your drawer. Exactly. I like all your stuff. Well, thank you. Highway 127 sale. Oh yeah, we live right beside it. Live on 127 so, actually. So I'm actually going to set up here in about two weeks. That is full. Cool. This enclosed trailer is full. Lots of full. But I'm only going to probably take 10% of my place. So. Oh wow. You got it. You do have them, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. This is See, I love down in here. Good oh, gosh. gosh. Goodness gracious. Mostly <laughs> Tennessee tags. Well, this is my Tennessee section here. Kentucky's right here. See, I got them labeled in all 50 states. This is all my Kentucky's right here. Wow. And they're not. Do you just, you just buy them offline or Everywhere. from wherever you can find yeah. them? Those are pretty popular. The Kentucky sun plates like mm -hmm. that. They're pretty popular. Motorcycle tags. Yeah. And this is like foreign plates and motorcycle. And these are the cereal plates. You remember these? You remember the cereal yeah. plates? Huh. Yeah. For bat people putting them in Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember getting those. Most people call them, some people call these motorcycle plates. I'll see them advertised a lot. Hey, I got a yeah, maybe motorcycle plates. Maybe like, cereal plates. Yeah. yeah. Hi, buddy. I know it's hard. What's this dog's hey, name? Sarge. Hello, Sarge. We'd put 10 loads in, and we'd walk it with a dozer. And then we'd put 10 loads here, walk with it, and then we'd just kind of keep walking our way. Uh, the ground level was actually almost at the base. Where do you see these ramps on that trailer? The ground level. Huh? Yeah. yeah. You look good. And... Really? Yeah. It was what was it?
have registration to tell them, well, I'm going to go get it, you know. But now you can't yeah, they don't let that fly yeah, anymore. They don't let it get away anymore. I drove a car one time for two years with no registration. And what's funny is I got a fender bender and uh, it wasn't bad. It barely put a scratch on somebody's bumper. The, the green light turned green and I was at an arrow. I've seen people do it and I felt so ignorant, but I actually just kind of nudged and I bumped the car in front of me. Both people got out holding their necks. I'm like, are you kidding me? I touched you. And uh, they come and did a police report and everything, so apparently they didn't turn into their insurance. But I thought, I'm in trouble for sure. It's not registered, not insured, and, they were, and the law wrote it all down and I never heard nothing about it. That was when I kind of changed my ways. I was like, yeah. Bonanza. They didn't. When did they start putting the cab skirt on them? The ribbon? Did you? Did I don't remember exactly. I, I, some had it, some didn't. In the same yeah, year. it was an option, I guess. Yeah, uh, the base truck had a rubber mat, and it might not have had that chrome around the back. Yeah. Yeah, Dad's Dad's seventy nine or or seventy eight didn't have that. Uh -uh. It didn't have the belt. No, it didn't. And these mirrors, these are somebody's put those on there. No, they're original. Really? I thought that Most they had the three. Two wheel drives had the the two, small mirrors. two small mirrors, huh? Yeah, that is a GM mirror. Uh, they actually re stamped the mirrors now. You can buy them repopped. I just what's funny is it didn't used to be that way no. and of course they follow the market I but do. 10 years ago heck you build them for nothing you could, you I mean not nothing them. but I mean cheap yeah, now you can, you can nice right but when the prices start going up on you then ankle vents <laughs> <going up. laughs> like come on there, there. Yeah. It, see this truck needs cab mounts and everything yeah. they've just gotten up so much a lot of people around home they So what did you think about that truck? From the road, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, and from, <laughs> and the, from the pictures. And from the photos yeah. uh, before we went to, to look at it. But, but up close, I was like, no. Yeah. I didn't even look at it because after I seen the rest, I was like, well, he's not gonna get yeah, it. Yeah, she, she basically got out of the car, walked <laughs> down the side of it, turned around and got back in the car because she knew it was, it was <laughs> photos make things look a lot nicer than they really are in person. And what we're looking for, Preferably a short box, you know, square body for her, but uh, just one that's not rotted completely out. And that's, they can be kind of hard to find in the price range that we're looking for one in. We're definitely not looking for something like this that needs a full 100% to, you know, going over. Just a patina truck, you know, maybe it needs just a little bit of mechanical work or maybe a motor transmission, something that's, you know, yeah. a quick fix, right? Put a set of wheels and tires on it possibly and drive it but that old truck was just uh yeah it was just too rough both floors were rotted out on it needed rockers one bedside was completely rotted out and gone on it uh the uh, firewall was rusted out on it both the doors were one was usable one bedside was usable <laughs> but other than that all the trim on the front everything there was not hardly a usable piece on that old pickup truck um at least uh, you know, if you were trying to make one decent anyway, you know, it basically needed everything that this, the old thing needed. So we skipped on that one, but the drive down to Tennessee was nice. Yeah. It was, it was worth the trip, even though it was a long trip. I definitely enjoyed it. A lot so, of square bodies down there. There are, mm -hmm. there is a lot of square bodies in Tennessee. <laughs> they, you, it's amazing. You can go just a few hours South, you know, where they don't experience hardly any salt and stuff. And a lot of the old vehicles that are gone mm -hmm. from around here, you know, still exist down there. Even though some, most of them were still kind of rusty, you know, the ones that were here, you know, they just don't, they're just gone. So, you know, it didn't work out. So let me tell you about where we're at as far as the pickup truck and get some color sprayed on it. Oh, hello. So this is Daisy. Turn around here, Daisy. Let them, let them see your pretty face. So this is Daisy. She is a, I don't know, she's a part lab and, 
Beagle. And, yeah, mm -hmm. Lab and Beagle, is that what it is? Yeah. We picked her up from the shelter and uh, we needed another dog because two wasn't enough. So we had to add, so we had to add Daisy. Daisy to the mix. Well, and the, and the reason behind that is, some of the reason anyway, is because we, we had lost our, uh, our little Chihuahua, Itzy. Yeah. And uh, that was, Itzy was pretty much my son's dog and he, he wanted another puppy to, uh, <laughs> you know, to fill that void, I guess. So this is Daisy and you'll be seeing her around. She's just a puppy right now and, and full of it. But yes. We're glad. <laughs> I'm glad to add her, add her to the place, even though she is a ton of work, <laughs> a ton of she's extra work. Though. Yeah, she's, she's real good. So let me say that I am way behind schedule. With my videos, normally I post every Saturday religiously, but I've been really busy with my day job, just trying to keep everything going around here like everybody else. And, you know, filming and stuff just had, had to take a back seat. There was, no, there was no other option. You know, I have to work and make a living. And there's only so much time in the day. But we'll hopefully get back on track very soon. Now this truck is super close. I know it looks like it's in a million pieces right now and it is but all the interior stuff on this they'll go that'll go together in a couple days uh, we're not going to do anything super special in there the the major uh, part of this truck or the major time consumer is what i'm doing right now and that is final finalizing all the body work every panel on this pickup truck has been gone over it's been sanded and now i'm just going over them one more time you know, I found a spot on the bedside that I didn't like that I'm having to redo, but just going over everything, making sure there's no dents that I missed because there always, there always is. And uh, actually, I found a couple little spots on this hood that weren't there uh, when I blocked this out outside on the sawhorses. So just hanging the hood on the truck, you know, and the support structure underneath the hood here, underneath the main skin, changes things. And you'd be surprised. You know, you may block something out like this, you know, off the vehicle and then put it on the vehicle and notice, you know, it's not as flat as what you remember. So we got a couple little spots here that I have to, have to either just try to block out or you'll have to fill because you don't want, if you dents anywhere, on a vehicle, you really don't want them on the hood because that's what everybody looks down the whole time that they're in the vehicle. So you really want to get the hood, which is a pain in the you know what, uh, straight. Let me bring you in and show you what I'm talking about. So let me see if I can quickly show you what's going on with this hood. I mean, it's nothing major, right? This I'm just using this as an example. This hood's pretty dang close. Now I've got a block with some 600 and I'm just going over all the panels on this truck, making sure that they're you know, good, and I didn't miss any dents or anything. Now, a lot of you guys may remember that I did the body work on this hood with it off of the truck sitting on sawhorses, and that changes things, right? The metal is stressed differently, the hood, sitting on a set of sawhorses versus it being bolted to the hinges on this truck. And, you know, because of that, and probably because body filler and primers and stuff shrink over time, and I don't care what the manufacturers say, they do. You know, you get little spots that'll show up, you know, from, uh, from just either shrinkage or stresses. So I'm just blocking this hood to make sure that I get the majority of these out because we don't want them showing up after you spray the paint on. But this thing is actually looking really good and I'm just lightly dusting over this. But you do find spots like that, you know, if you give your body filler and your primer's timed enough to set and uh, you actually cure completely because it does take a while. They don't cure in 20 minutes like they fully cure in 20 minutes like the paperwork usually says. You know, we got a spot there too. Just a little spot. I mean, it's not a, not a layer of primer deep, but it is a spot nonetheless. And that's probably from this support structure that's under this hood, stressing the metal a little different than what it was when I originally blocked this thing outside. So I've had a lot of people ask, have you been affected by the flooding and stuff that we've recently had here in the state? And the answer is no. And I appreciate all of the concern. I haven't had time to get back with everybody, all the questions and stuff. I've just been behind as far as the time that I've had available to work on my stuff, to film, 
to edit. I mean, it takes a ton of time to get everything together. Plus, I really want to get this truck in color. I want to get the bodywork part of this behind me, and I've been devoting what little time that I've had to the to the prep work because that's pretty much where I'm at on this. Uh, I've got to reprime this bedside um, because it had a little wave in it that I wasn't happy with. I got to fill in some pinholes and scuff all the spots that I missed and usually those spots consist of the hardest places to reach on the vehicle. I know that's my case anyway. You're far more likely to sand in the middle of a door than you are to get down on your knees and scuff under the jams. So you know I've got to touch up the bottoms of the rockers and the bottoms of the bedsides. All that kind of stuff. And then you know this thing other than you know scuffing the jams should be pretty close to ready for paint. And I am so excited to share that part of the project with you. My brother has a, uh, a building that he had, the property that he lives at has a building on it that has a makeshift paint booth in it. There's an inchworm. I'm easily distracted. Has a makeshift paint, ah! Has a makeshift paint booth on it that hasn't been used in the last 10 years. He hasn't used it since he's lived there. And we're gonna go over there we're going to set it up, run the air in it, get the, all the filters changed, and uh, you know wash it down. And we're going to get it ready, and we're going to paint this truck in that booth. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's my oldest brother Rick, the one that went with us on the trip to Tennessee. So he's a great guy, and I can't wait to to get all of that set up and get some color on this and get that part of the project, you know, in the rear view, because then the rest of this project. Sorry, Gavin. The rest of this project, as far as the interior and that kind of stuff, will go super fast. I can probably do the interior in a day or two. It's the bodywork that takes forever. So we're getting close, getting super close. All right, guys, that's it this week. I really just wanted to touch base with everybody, introduce you to, to Daisy, the new addition to the family. Now all that's got to happen is Chloe and Bubba have to accept her. Oh. <laughs> Big body slams and Bubba wants to keep playing afterwards. Yeah, he's alright. Uh, but uh, I think that they will. She is a sweet little dog and uh, we're, we're glad to add her, you know, add her to the family. So we also took you on the trip down south to Tennessee, me, Elizabeth, and my brother Rick. That was a beautiful trip. Unfortunately, it didn't work out the way that, you know, the way that we hoped that it would. Just hoping that truck would be a lot nicer than it was and we'd be driving it home. But in reality, that truck was worse body-wise than this truck. There was almost not a usable panel on that thing. The hood was no good, right? The, none of the bumpers. It had one usable bedside. It had one usable door, but the cab was just... It was pretty bad. Needed floors on both sides and cab supports and rockers and cab corners, all the normal, all the usual suspects and these pickups. But the further you go down south, the more of them that you see and the better chance that you have to, to get one or to find one that's in better condition. You can also go out west and you can find them, but they've been, they've been sunbaked out there. Nothing rubber exists on them out there or cloth, but the bodies usually out west stay pretty good. So that's it. You know, we're getting super close. You know, all the detail work that needs done on this, I have to just kind of focus and, and, and uh, you know, knock it out because nobody wants to see me sand door jams and adjust doors. Well, very few of you anyway. And all that stuff has to be done before I can get the quality paint job on this that this truck deserves and that I, you know, want to put on it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped us out, believe me, it is much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully next week.